Welcome to Stories of Kerman, California. While doing research, I could not find any scary stories other than ones that could not be verified in any way. I decided to go to Reddit. I found one Reddit where someone spoke of three stories, where he went to the old Kerman High School. These are those stories. Please do not forget to subscribe. And it helps me continue to make these videos. Also, if you engage by sharing and commenting it, helps as well. Thank you for being here, my fellow horror lovers. So back in the late 90s, around 1995 to 1996, we used to go out to this old high school way in the country area, outside of Fresno. It was the old Kerman High School that shut down in 1967. Funny thing was, they shut it down because they said the school was too small and they built a new one. So here's the funny part. It's almost dead on, the same size, but in the city and not out surrounded by grapevines. I was fresh out of high school, and we used to like to take girls out there for the scare factor. But soon, things started to happen. First Incident We went out there in a group of about 10 of us in three cars. So this school was built back in the early 1900s. It had that very cool art deco style architecture with the big style Roman columns in the front with steps leading up to the big double doors. Kinda reminded me of the Fresno High School Auditorium. Well, we approached the doors and they were sealed shut. So we tried to force our way in but my friend saw a pair of red eyes looking out at the group from the window. This caused her to scream and run for the cars, which that's what half the group ended up doing. Myself and three of my buddies weren't spooked till we heard a big bang on the other side of the doors. Then we ran to the cars. The strange part was no one's car would start. Mind you, I had a brand new 1966 Mustang GT convertible. My friend's girlfriend starts to panic so bad she was ready to jump out the back seat and run the seven miles back to Fresno. The way she was crying, I was ready to let her. Finally, my car started, which for some reason all the others did also. The bad part was, even if my friend's car start before mine, I was blocking everyone in. Second Incident A few months pass. My friends have big mouths and we're telling everyone what happened that night. So once again, we rolled out there with some girls and guys we met at a party. But this time, there were like 20 of us and a few of us were armed. We brought a chainsaw and crowbar because we were getting in one way or another. One of my friends was in the Marines, Special Forces, so we breached in true military fashion by removing a back door hidden by some big, overgrown bushes. It was so eerie inside, silent and spooky, which made my date hug onto me like a backpack. Most of us shrugged off. What happened the first time was homeless people inside the building, so that's why I had my 9 millimeter on me, and we walked around with no issues till we hit the second floor. Then we heard the door to the restroom slam, which scared everyone. We ran towards the restroom because we had guns. We figure we scare the shit out of whoever was in the restroom. Yeah, we pile in there like a bunch of dumbasses, only to find it empty. We kind of laughed as we all got out of there quickly. And as we were trying to explain what happened, we heard the loudest scream, followed by a Get out! Mm, in this deep, creepy voice. Still gives me chills. Just thinking about this as I write, even though it's been 27 years, the voice is something that still kind of haunts me. Everybody darted and took off running. Not everyone had a flashlight so falling behind would leave you in the pitch dark, like you can barely see your hand in front of your face. Well, one of the couples who was with the group, 
I didn't know them. The guy left his girlfriend behind, and she slipped and ate concrete and was almost knocked out cold. Her boyfriend already had his car started and was yelling at us to go. He didn't care that his girlfriend didn't make it out. Well, as I came out the back door with the girl I was with, we were running across the yard towards the cars, and something grabbed my ankle and yanked me back, which caused her to spin in a 180. She said she saw an old man in the school window, as my brother and friend are helping me up. My friend and two others are headed back in, because that girl was missing. Her boyfriend never got out to look for her. I never told them about what the girl I was with had seen. We didn't want to leave that other girl in there. After fifteen minutes, I'm back at my car, refusing to move till we were all there. Finally. My friend came out with the girl who fell, carrying her, because when she slipped and smacked her head on the concrete, she passed out. My friend put her in his car, and not her boyfriend's car, and we all left. As I was leaving, my dumb-ass friends decided to throw a metal pipe through the window. Well, the girls that were with them said something threw it back out the window at them. I wasn't there, so I can't confirm this incident. I was long gone when this happened, but these two girls never hung around us again. Now, the girl I was with told me two weeks later, when I asked her out on a date, that her grandmother told her not to have anything to do with me specifically, and that's all she would tell me. Here it is. Everyone was leaving for college, boot camp, or jobs. I'm visiting my friend who was a security guard, at work. He had two co-workers with him, and we were all talking about haunted job sites and areas. These guys were former army, and claimed they weren't scared of anything. So my friend brought up the school, mind you. This guy has been at the school every time we went. So after all the big talk, they were off the clock, and it was around 2 a.m. Don't ask me how, but once again we were on our way to the school. Just the four of us and everyone seemed excited to be going out there except me. Third Incident We got there, and entered from the same back door. We covered every area of downstairs, before heading upstairs. Well after about twenty minutes upstairs, we ended up in the upper section of the auditorium. I sat in a seat overlooking the balcony, looking at the stage, while my friend and the other two made it up to the, what would be the audio video room in today's auditoriums. Well, I wanted to smoke. Yes, I know. Nasty habit. But I was young and stupid. Laugh out loud, I stood up to find my lighter in my pocket, and I'm still haunted by this. What happened next happened so slowly. I put the cigarette in my mouth, and it was pitch black in there, and I brought the lighter up to my mouth, and I flicked the wheel, and as the sparks ignited the gas from the lighter, the flame lit up the face of this old man, looking right at me, inches away from me. I have been to Afghanistan. I have seen the hate in people's eyes. It's a look you never forget. And this is what filled this old man's eyes. Except there was rage. The next thing I know, I was going over the balcony railing and down to the first floor, but I also went through the old floorboards and into the basement boiler room. I was, pardon my language, but I was Fubar. My friends ran down to the first floor and into the auditorium. So my friend, his co-worker, a crazy bastard, jumped down the hole in the floor to check on me. My knee was torn up and all I could think about was my scholarship to UCLA was gone due to my knee injury. My friend and his other co-worker went to look at how to access the basement area while well, I couldn't move or put weight on my knee. After about fifteen minutes, the guy who was with me said he was going to go see if he could find the stairs up to the first floor so we could get out of there. When he left, he took the only flashlight with him, 
so I once again decide to smoke to take my mind off the pain. This is so hard to write, because it makes my heart race and anxiety flare up just retelling it. Once again, I went to light my cigarette, as something blew out the flame on the lighter, and we heard this creepy voice. Go. No smoking in here. I freaked out, screaming. There's something in here. There's something in here. And started crawling into the dark until the guy came running back to me. He felt it because he grabbed me by the bag of my shirt and drugged me across the floor and a very painful and bumpy climb upstairs and pulled his gun out and shot out the door handle and lock, followed by a hard kick for the door to open. The door to the basement was outside, and not inside where. My friend and his co-worker were looking. They heard the gunshots and came outside, running to find us, and didn't ask any questions. They picked me up and drugged me to the truck and tossed me in the back bed and bailed out of there, and didn't stop until we got to the hospital located in Fresno. I was in extreme pain. We never went back to that school ever again. But it wasn't over, myself. And the guy who was in the basement with me started having weird stuff happen to us. While I was on a gurney in the hospital, a guy who was across from me died right before I went into surgery for my knee. Then my hospital roommate died. Two nights into my stay there, I was at University Medical Center, County Hospital. So I get discharged, and three weeks after being home, things get crazy. I had turned my garage into a bedroom, so it's dark as hell in there at night. I turn on the light next to my bed and slide up, putting my back against the wall, because I still couldn't bend my knee from the surgery, and it was braced up straight. Well, my Rottweiler started growling at the end of the bed, and then went into a full-blown fit of rage, and just then, the whole bed was pulled out from underneath me with me landing on the floor and my leg getting hung up on the end of the bed, causing me to overstretch my knee. I pulled my leg off the bed, which it then just slammed on the ground, sending me into a fit of major pain. I reached for my gun in my nightstand, and the nightstand moved on me. Due to the weight I was putting on it, the light fell off and broke, and the room went dark. All I heard was my dog, barking loud and snapping while I crawled my butt to the door and out to the backyard porch where my grandfather found me on the ground, bleeding. My grandfather thought it was a burglar, so he took the gun out of my hand and was yelling into the garage for the person to come out. Then he went in and turned on the big light and nothing. My dog stopped barking and he called an ambulance and I went back to the hospital and back into surgery to repair the MCL I had torn again. When I got back home, after another week's stay in the hospital, I slept in the house in the living room till I healed. I finally left for college, and things would happen here and there, but nothing major till a few years later. My friend's co-worker had some major experiences so bad he went and saw an Indian medicine man. The other co-worker decided to go with him, the medicine man did a cleansing on them. He wants back to the school to leave a peace offering. Someone burned down the school in 1998, and the Fresno County Sheriff said it was arson, and has never caught the person. I was in another country when that happened. When I got home, my friends, who used to go out there with me, told me all about it, and we took a ride out there to see for ourselves. My friend's co-worker, the one who was with me in the basement, Never was the same from what I was told and just packed up and moved one day. There were a lot of talk that his offering wasn't enough and whatever we messed with stuck to him. There was also rumors that he was the one who burned down the school and skipped town because of it. I do not really know because I was gone and, and didn't see anyone but a few people when I got back. Even now I haven't seen anyone from those days. My friend and I kind of grew apart and the last time I saw him was five years ago. I heard other stories about that school, and some people say they've been in there and nothing ever happened to them. There are others that say they saw and felt worse things in that school. 
I was only 18 when that all happened, so I'm not sure what I really saw that night on the balcony. It was dark, dusty, and dim moonlight coming from the dirty windows. Your eyes adapt to light and dark, and the rod and cones in your retinas work to allow your pupils to adjust to light and dark. Any sudden light exposure causes the pupils to react too fast, messing with your vision briefly as your eyes try to adjust to the sudden light. During that moment, I moved too fast and fell over the rail, but the voices I can't explain. It was an experience that will haunt me for the rest of my life. And that concludes the three stories about the old Kerman, California high school. I know that it is now burned down, so going to go visit such high school will be not as interesting. But for those of you that went to school there, what do you think? Please, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for a chance to win a prize once we hit 500 subscribers. Also comment and share. Thank you, my fellow horror lovers. Until next time.